Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is about converting radians into degrees. Alright, so, so you may need this skill if you're in a trigonometry class or if you're in an advanced geometry class. You may come across the fact that when measuring central angles of a circle that you can measure those angles in degrees or in radians. However, I'm more comfortable with degrees because that's what I've seen most of my life. So it's good to know how to convert radians into degrees. So one thing is to recognize that the sum of all the degrees of a circle is 360 degrees and that equals to 2 pi radians. So knowing that 360 degrees is equivalent to 2 pi radians, if we were to solve for radians here, we can divide both sides by 2 pi. All right, and then simplifying this further, we find that 2 goes into itself once. We know that 2 goes into 360, 180 times, and I find that 180 degrees divided by pi will be equivalent to one radian. Okay, all right, so that's good to know. So it's going to be this conversion factor that we'll be using in our problems for this lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and start with problem number one. In problem number one, we have our angle measurement in radians, and our given angle is pi thirds radians, all right, pi over three. So what we can do here is we can convert this into degrees by multiplying this by a conversion factor that we just found, which was 180 divided by pi. All right, so we can simplify this and then multiply it, all right? That's my preference. That means that I have pi going into itself once, and I know that 3 goes into itself once, and 3 will go into 180 60 times. From here, I'll multiply straight across, and 1 times 60 is 60, and then 1 times 1 is 1, and then 60 divided by 1 equals to 60 degrees, all right? So there's my answer for number one. We started out with pi thirds radians and we converted this into degrees by multiplying by a conversion factor of 180 degrees divided by pi. And then we simplify that to get 60 degrees. Yeah, and that's my answer. Let's go ahead and box that up. Boxing up my answer, ladies and gentlemen, and now we're on to problem number two. All right, in problem number two, we have seven pi divided by four. We're going to convert this into degrees by multiplying by our conversion factor, which is 180 divided by pi. So simplifying before we multiply, I know that the pi's will cancel out. I know that four goes into itself once, and four goes into 180 45 times, all right? So then multiplying straight across here, we have seven times 45. And 7 times 45 is 315. And then multiplying straight across in the denominator here, remember that pi went into itself once. We have 1 times 1, which is 1. So this ends up simplifying to 315 degrees. That's right, converting the radians into degrees. For problem number three, we have negative pi over six. Now, one thing to understand is your angle measurement is currently a negative value. So if you start out with a negative value, you will end with a negative value. You're only going to need to multiply this existing radian measure by 180 over pi. So we'll multiply here, I have 180 divided by pi, and then I'm going to simplify before I multiply, knowing that a negative times a positive is a negative result. We can then say that pi will go into itself once, pi goes into itself once right here. We know that six goes into itself once, we know that six goes into 180 30 times. Then multiply straight across. So one times 30 is 30, one times one is one. You will then simplify this further to end up with negative 30 degrees. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that degree symbol is too big. That's too big for you. Let's make it smaller. There you go. That's, that's better. That's better now. Okay, let's go ahead and put a box around it. Box around our answer. There we have it. So notice how we began with a negative radian measure. Your measurement in degrees will also be negative. All right, so keep that in mind when you're working these out. So let's continue. That was problem number three. 
And now we have problem number four. So here I have 11 pi divided by 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to multiply this times 180 divided by pi. All right, so we're going to simplify this before I multiply it. At least that's my preference, okay? So I know that the pi's are going to cancel out to 1 here. I know that 15 goes into itself once. It'll go into 180. Oh, yes, 12 times, ladies and gentlemen. And then we will multiply straight across. So 11 times 12 is going to give me 132. And then 1 times 1 is 1. And so that simplifies to give me a result of 132 degrees. Yes. This is the answer, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. Box up your answer, and that's problem number four. All right, next problem. Here we have in number five, negative eight pi fifths. Now, remember, anytime your radian measure is negative, the end result will remain negative, okay? So therefore, you're gonna still multiply by your conversion factor, which is 180 divided by pi, just like that. We can then cancel out these pi's. Mm -hmm. I know that five goes into itself once. Five will go into 180 36 times. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we multiply straight across because a negative times a positive is a negative. Mm -hmm. And then eight times 36 is 288. All right. Degrees. So your answer is going to be negative 288 degrees because, of course, this would have been over 1 and simplified. You end up with negative 288 degrees. Done. Okay? All right. I'm going to put a box around this. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. That was problem number 5. Moving on to the next problem. In problem number 6, we have negative 5 pi radians. And we're going to convert this into degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. Now, remember that any number could be placed over 1, right? Okay, so if you need to see that as a ratio, as a fraction, just place the number over 1. Then, simplifying this, I know that my pi's will cancel out, mm -hmm, yes, and then multiplying negative 5 times 180 will end up with negative 900 degrees. Uh-huh, negative 900 degrees, and that's it. That's it. You don't have to worry about trying to simplify this any further or finding some type of coterminal angle unless you're asked to. Remember, this lesson is just focusing on converting radians to degrees. So as it is, we started out with a negative value. We will end with a negative value. And yes, you can probably figure out how many times this will go around your circle clockwise. However, they didn't ask us to. So you can use this conversion as a step in your process, but for our lesson right here today, we're just focusing on converting the existing radian measure into degrees. Let's box it up. So here we have problem number six, done and done. All right, next problem. In problem number seven, we're given an angle measurement in radians, and that measurement is just two. Well, that's not going to change anything, ladies and gentlemen. You'll still need to multiply by 180 divided by pi, all right? And yes, you can place the 2 over 1. Then, multiplying straight across, that 2 times 180 is 360. And then, 1 times pi is pi, so you end up with 360 divided by pi degrees. Now, that's one way of writing your answer, but most likely you'll be finding a decimal representation of this value. So that means that you would then divide these two values together, all right? And using your calculator, you'll end up with 114 and 59 hundredths degrees, all right? And that's rounded to the nearest hundredths place, of course. So depending on the requirements of your class, you can end up with this answer or Round it to the nearest hundredths place, you'll have this answer here, that 114 and 59 hundredths degrees. Done and done. That was problem number seven, ladies and gentlemen. We are moving on to the next problem now. And here we have problem number eight. So this given number here is currently in radians, all right? And what we'll be doing is converting this into degrees. Also take note of the fact that if they don't show you a degree symbol, then you can make an assumption that it's in radians. Otherwise, they would have to show you the degree symbol on your angle measurement, all right? So if this number is representing an angle and you do not see a degree symbol, you can assume it's in radians already. So to convert this into degrees, 
degrees, we'll be multiplying by our conversion factor, which is 180 divided by pi, and then multiplying this out. We do know that 4 and 25 hundredths is over 1, so multiplying straight across, that means multiplying 4 and 25 hundredths times 180, you'll end up with 765, and this is going to be over pi. And so this is going to be degrees at this point, all right? Multiplying by our conversion factor will take our number into degrees. So our result is 765 divided by pi degrees, or finding the decimal representation of that value, you'll end up with 243 and 51 hundredths degrees. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. That was problem number eight. Let's go ahead and box up our answers here, depending on which version you need for your class. And that's going to do it for us for today, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, this is Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring. This was our Converting Radiance to Degrees tutorial. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. All right. And if you're able, go ahead and send us a donation if you're able. We really, really appreciate it. And that helps us bring you more free math tutorials from Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.